These are some of the tools that I've been making on the channel recently and uh, given the amount of time and effort that I've put into making them, I don't want to store them in a tool drawer with um, other tools where they're going to be knocking around getting scratched and damaged. So for some time now I've been thinking about some sort of custom storage solution. And when the uh, good people at Alter reached out to me and offered me a laser engraver to try, I thought this is a perfect opportunity to make some custom toolboxes. So in today's video we're going to take a look at the machine, we're going to do some design work and then we're going to build some custom laser engraved toolboxes. So the machine is the Auto Laser Master 3 and it's a 10 watt diode laser and the manufacturers claim that it will cut and engrave a range of different materials from wood to leather to acrylic. Out of the box there is some assembly required but it's just bolting the frame together, installing and tensioning the drive belts, plugging in the cables and, uh, and so on. Not complicated at all, took me about an hour. And at this point I'm reasonably impressed with the quality of the machine. Uh, everything's made from kind of pressed um, steel parts which are quite heavy and quite solid which is what you want from a machine like this uh, when it's running at high speed. And even the buttons feel solid and well made. I'm eventually going to make toolboxes for all of these tools but I think we'll start with the finger plate here because it's a nice square shape and that should mean that the box is reasonably simple to construct. So we're going to move on shortly to the uh, box design in software and uh, before we do that we need to work out how big we want the box to be. I'm going to be working to internal dimensions here and uh, I think um, 90 by 90 by 90 is going to be a good size for this box. Gives us a little bit of space around the edge to play with and uh, yeah should look good. And onto the uh, software for design and what I'll be using today is this uh, online box generator called boxes.py, I'll leave a link in the description. What this allows us to do is to very quickly design a simple box with all the tabs in place and so on and to export the cut files that we need for the laser. Now there are many different options here but um, I'm going to choose a simple box and I'm going to make firstly the, uh, the top then the base. Now because I'm interested in the internal dimensions rather than the external dimensions, uh, I'm going to uncheck this option here which allows these dimensions here to refer to the internal dimensions of the box. So we've got the X and the Y and, and the height there. I'm going to make the uh, the height 30 millimeters because I'm doing the top of the box um, and I'm, I'm just selecting the finger joint there. Um, thickness is already 3 millimeters, and the rest of the options we can leave as default. So um, all you need to do then is to hit the generate or the download option to generate your file. So what we have now is the pattern that the laser will actually use to cut the parts out of the piece of wood to make our box. And what we need to do next is to import these into a piece of software called Lightburn. And what Lightburn does is to generate the G-code uh, or the machine instructions that the laser will actually interpret into uh, X and Y moves and, and power settings for the laser in order to cut our parts out. So first things first, we need to import the patterns that we've just generated in our uh, in our online tool. Uh, these are the patterns for the top of the box. I'm going to do the same for the bottom of the box in a minute so we can cut everything at once. But firstly, I just want to explain a few things about how Lightbind works. Now, I'm not going to go into um, detail on this because there are like myriad uh, software tutorials on uh, Lightburn, but I would like to explain just the very basics. Now what we can do here is we can select different components of our drawing and put them onto different layers and for each of those layers you can have um, individual cut settings essentially. So for instance where you want to cut right through the material uh, you have one set of settings and then where you want to engrave onto the material um, you might have a different set of settings and you can have those in the same file. Now if you're wondering how you work out what settings you need, there are essentially two settings that you need to worry about. Um, one is speed of the uh, travel of the laser and the other one is the power of the laser. And these two settings in conjunction with each other dictate how much laser light effectively falls on the material at any one point and therefore how much material is ablated. Lightburn has a feature whereby you can create these sort of test grids where um, you know it'll, uh, it'll vary speed on one axis and power of the laser on the other axis and that allows you to dial in your settings for different materials that you might be using. So for this layer where I want to cut through the material all the way, I'm going to use 200 millimeters a minute and 100% power, which is what I've worked out to be a good combination of settings to cut all the way through this 3 millimeter material. One thing I would like to do with the top of this box is to engrave my logo on it. Now, um, it's quite simple to do this. Uh, what you need to do is you need to um, export your logo as an F SVG, which is uh, a file format that uh, Lightburn understands. And uh, to import that into the software, you just drag it and drop it. Now, I've put that onto a separate layer because we want to engrave this. We don't want to cut all the way through the material, so therefore I'm going to be using different settings. And because we're engraving this uh, logo, we're going to be running the laser a lot faster. So two and a half uh, thousand millimeters a minute and 100% uh, power. So I've also added the cut templates for the bottom of the box as well as the top of the box. I've added some text with the name of the tool and when I made it. And I've also added a QR code and I'll talk more about that later. 
The other thing I've done is I've put that blue box around the outside. And what that is, is that's the exact size of an A4 sheet of paper, which is the size of wood that I'm going to be cutting. That allows me to just lay the cut files out so I can get everything onto one sheet of wood. I'm going to be making this toolbox out of three millimeter birch plywood. This machine is capable of cutting much thicker than that, but um, I think three millimeter is a good thickness for this box. Now the order that we cut and engrave things is quite important. Um, if we were to do the cuts first, quite often what happens is that the wood will drop through and move slightly, therefore misaligning your graphics when you come to engrave them. So we, therefore we do the engraving first and then cut them out afterwards. And I'm really pleased with the way that this has come out. The uh, cuts seem really accurate and the uh, engravings are really crisp. Now we do have some light scorching on the surface of the parts there and that's because we're not using air assist. Air assist is a feature whereby you blow um, compressed air through the laser nozzle as it's cutting so that it forces the smoke away from the laser uh, and it reduces that and it leaves you with a cleaner part. But um, I don't have that hooked up right now. Um, this machine is capable of it but I just don't have the, uh, the air pump installed. Not a problem in our case because we're going to use a little bit of light sanding just to, to remove that. Onto assembly now and it's simply a question of slotting the parts together. Now the tolerances on these parts are quite tight. Um, you do get an option in the design software to specify the kerf of the laser, i.e. the width of the laser, so it is possible to fine tune this. If you did nothing then the parts would be really loose. With the tolerances I've got here, the, um, this box would probably actually stay together just by friction alone, but I did actually end up putting in uh, a couple of dabs of super glue into some of the tab slots just to make sure that nothing uh, moves over time. This birch plywood's really pretty to look at, I think, um, but it, it does pick up dirt and finger marks and stuff quite easily. So um, I want to finish it with some uh, some Danish oil just to give it a bit of protection, um, feed the wood a little bit, and just make sure that it's uh, a little bit more resistant to uh, the, you know that dirt and those fingerprints. I managed to find some really small hinges online. They were listed as uh, jewelry box hinges, I believe. Um, so I'm just gonna mark those out where I want them exactly. And then I'm gonna use this really tiny drill, or it's a one millimeter drill, I think, uh, mounted in a pin vise to pre-drill the holes before using the self-tapping screws to secure the hinges. This laser cutter will cut more than just wood. So I've come back into Lightburn and I've created the uh, cut files that I need to cut some foam inserts for the box to keep the tool nice and secure and safe whilst it's uh, in storage. I'm using EVA foam for a couple of reasons here. Uh, one is that it's a really nice material for this kind of uh, application as it's quite firm, but also it cuts really nicely. As well as cutting nicely, you can also engrave this material. I say engrave, I mean, what's actually happening is the laser is scanning backwards and forwards, obviously, melting some of the material away and leaving uh, this kind of embossed effect, which I think is really effective for, for logos and so on. Because we're burning away the material here, um, you do have to be a little bit careful with material selection. Some materials can be quite poisonous when you when you when you burn them. So um, I think PVC is particularly nasty. Um, I think EVA foam is is okay, although it does give off quite a bad smell. But um, I would do your own research on this, and I always make sure I'm wearing a respirator and I'm working in a well ventilated room, as well as using my laser safety glasses, of course. I managed to find these latches online. 
I like the way they uh, they look and they match the hinges, which is great. I've also offset them uh, to one side. Now, um, the reason for doing this is partly aesthetic. I like the way it looks and uh, partly because being right-handed, I'm able to uh, actuate that lever and open the box lid just with one hand. So that's our toolbox complete. And I'm hoping that um, it's going to give a good level of uh, protection against drops and scratches and damage and so on. Also, with it being foam lined and me living in England, which is a rainy climate, I'm hoping that it'll give a little bit of extra protection against uh, rust. And given that it's laser cut and etched, uh, it was quite simple to make. So I've, I've started making toolboxes for my other tools. This is my uh, tailstock die holder, for instance. And I've also started to um, improve the box opening mechanism by adding magnets. As you can see from this one here, we get quite a satisfying sort of click when it opens and closes now. And one last thing to talk about are the QR codes that I've put onto the bottom of each of the boxes. Now, in case you didn't know, you can scan these with your mobile phone and that will link through to a URL that you uh, specified when creating the QR code. And in this case, I've linked it through to the video where I'm making the tool that's contained within this box. Can sometimes be a problem and the vice isn't always the answer. So this is where the finger plate comes into its own. Now, you might think this is a bit of a pointless exercise, which it probably is, but I thought it was a bit of fun. And, uh, you know, as I was engraving the uh, logo, I might as well do this at the same time. So why not, eh? So that pretty much wraps it up for this week. Um, if you're interested in making these kind of boxes yourself, I will leave links to the uh, box generator and also to my Patreon where I'll be uploading the uh, templates for these boxes. And if you're interested in uh, buying one of these laser cutters, I'll leave some links in the description where you can get a discount. Thanks very much for watching, folks. I really appreciate it. And uh, I hope to see you next time.